Hey everybody, today we're picking back up in our Gen 1 to Revelation 22 project, picking up in Genesis chapter 45. And today we're going to be looking at something that I have called Pharaoh Shows Honor. We see Pharaoh uh, kind of step back and, and show honor to Joseph's family. Joseph's family now knows who he is. Now his father has not yet made it back, but we're going to see the beginning of that in the story. Now I'm doing Facebook Live videos again this week because uh, I tried doing some recordings last week and it's, it's just not as good of a stewardship of time for me uh, to actually take those things and then to take the time to then upload the videos actually adds a lot more time in. So I'm, I'm going to do the Facebook Live. The timing may kind of vary. It may be early in the morning, but it may be here more in the afternoon or early evening may be a better time. So I'm going to kind of play with that. But those are just minor things. Videos can be played back even after they've been made. Let's pick up today in Genesis chapter 45, looking at verse 16. When the report was heard in Pharaoh's house, Joseph's brothers have come. It pleased Pharaoh and his servants. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, Do this, load your beasts and go back to the land of Canaan, and take your father and your households and come to me, and I will give you the best of the land of Egypt. And you shall eat of the fat of the land. And you, Joseph, are commanded to say, Do this, take wagons from the land of Egypt for your little ones and your, for your wives, and bring them, bring your father and come. Have no concern for your goods, for the best of the land of Egypt is yours. The sons of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them wagons according to the command of Pharaoh, and gave them provisions for the journey. To each and all of them he gave a change of clothes, but to Benjamin he gave three hundred shekels of silver and five changes of clothes. To his father he sent as follows, ten donkeys loaded with the good things of Egypt, ten female donkeys with grain, bread, and provision for his father on the journey. Then he sent his brothers away, and as they departed, he said to them, Do not quarrel on the way. So they went up out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan to their father, Jacob. And they told him, Joseph is still alive. He is ruler over all the land of Egypt. And his heart became numb, for he did not believe them. But when they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said to them, and when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of their father Jacob revived. And Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. What we see happen in this passage is really a joyous occasion, and also some some uh, cautions and words of wisdom as well. But this overall, our text today, is a, a passage of rejoicing. Finally, Joseph's brothers know who he is. He's sending them back to, to get his father. But the interesting thing is that when the report gets back to Pharaoh that Joseph's brothers are here, Pharaoh is the one that says, Say to your brothers, do this, load your beasts full of what you need. Go back to the land of Canaan, take your father and come down here. You're going to eat of the fat of the land. Pharaoh is like, I'm going to give you the best food. I'm going to give you a place at my table type thing. He's saying, come on down here. I'm going to take care of you. Joseph is, you know, blessed us immensely. He's a wise man. He's the governor over the land of Egypt. Bring your family down here. Joseph, we'll take care of them. And so... Joseph was told by Pharaoh, verse 19, And you, Joseph, are commanded to say, Pharaoh, an ungodly king, is commanding Joseph to say this. Do this, take wagons from the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father and come. Have no concern for your goods. Don't worry about bringing everything with you, because the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. Verse 21, and the sons of Israel did so. Joseph gives them wagons that Pharaoh had commanded that he gave them. He also gave them provisions for the journey. He gave all of them a change of clothes. But once again, he shows favor and honor to his brother, the youngest brother. He gives Benjamin 300 shekels of silver and five changes of clothes. Again, showing honor to his younger brother, who he has missed. To his father, jo Jacob excuse me, Joseph, all these J names. Joseph sends his father ten male donkeys loaded with the good things of Egypt, ten female donkeys loaded with grain and bread and provisions for his dad, food for the journey that he's going to be making. His dad is old, 
at this point. But in, then in verse 24, we then again see Joseph's wisdom in what he says. He sends his brothers away, and as they departed, he says to them, Do not quarrel on the way. He knows his brothers. He's been testing them through the different interactions. Now they know who he is, but he reminds them, don't quarrel. God is blessing and God has made a provision. All expenses paid to bring them down, to give them the very best of lodging, the very best of places in Egypt. And in the midst of it, Joseph knows who his brothers are. Now there has been some change, but he knows the fleshly nature can rise up. When we begin to be blessed materially, Far too often we forget God. I believe it's in Proverbs where it says, Lord, give me only the food that is needful for me and give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with what I need, Father. Let me be content with that. Don't give me great wealth and don't give me great poverty. Help me not to have so much that I would forget you and not to have so little that I would be tempted to turn to to theft and and stealing and taking things and doing things that are not right in order to provide. We see that in the book of Proverbs, and that, that reminds me kind of that here in the passage. When Joseph rises up and says, don't quarrel, a lot of material blessing is coming. His brothers, yes, have had some bearing of their past, being exposed, that yes, Joseph in fact did live, and their sin is kind of blatant in front of their eyes. But at the same time, they're being shown a lot of grace, and they're being blessed materially. So Joseph very wisely says, do not quarrel along the way. He reminds them to stay humble, to stay focused, which we all need that in our lives. In verse 25, they go up out of the land of Egypt, they go to Canaan, to their father Jacob, and they tell him, Joseph is still alive, he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. Now what happens to Jacob? His heart became numb. He did not believe all the words of Joseph which they had said to him. But when he saw the wagons that were sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob revived. And then... You know, we see a lot of Jacob's name used here, but remember, God changed his name several chapters back. And here again, verse 28, Jacob's other name, his God-given name is used, Israel. Israel, one who has struggled with God and prevailed. We struggle in that time in our life. We wrestle against surrendering to the Lord. But when we surrender... Then we have the victory. We are overcomers in Christ, 1 John tells us. In verse 28, Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Israel knows he is near the end of his life. But his his spirit comes back into him. His, His strength, his vigor, his excitement comes back into him. When he sees the wagons and he hears, he sees the proof that Joseph really is alive. And he makes a decision, I'm going to go see my son before I die. This is a very joyful time. The family is going to be reunited. Yet at the same time, if you look prophetically forward, this is a very blessed time. But later on in history, this blessed time turns into a difficult time where the children of Israel will become slaves in bondage for 400 years in the land of Egypt. And Egypt is a very good land, a very materialistically blessed land, the most powerful nation on the world at this time. And God sent Joseph there to preserve life all across the globe, all across the known world in this worldwide famine that took place. God used Joseph and put him there. Even in the midst of an ungodly place, an ungodly government, God did send Joseph there. But the truth is that Egypt still does represent the world in Scripture. Materialism, it represents bondage to slavery and sin. And while God is blessing in the middle of this place, in the middle of famine, God is blessing them. God is taking from the wicked and blessing His people in the middle of this time. There are hard days ahead. But we're going to see God's fingerprints and, and really 
His miraculous power as we go on in this chapter and we see God working in Israel, in Jacob's family, in Joseph's example, really as leading the family. Fulfilling that calling that God had placed on his life, but doing so wisely, doing so humbly, and constantly pointing the attention to God, the credit to God, not to himself. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for a time of rejoicing. God, you used an ungodly ruler, the king, Pharaoh, an idolater, a pagan king, to accomplish your will and to bless your people. Oh God, the hands of kings are like the river. They are in your hands. You can direct it where you want to direct it. Oh Father, let our prayer be for your will to be done and our focus to be upon you because you can work miracles. Let us not forget that. I still believe, Father, you're working miracles down to this day. You still are sovereign over the affairs of history. History is your story, his story. Not the story of mankind, but the story of God's redemption and God sovereignly working through the affairs of men to accomplish His plans and purposes. We praise You, Father, for that. Encourage our hearts, I pray. And as we go forward this week, Father, I just pray for encouragement because we're going to see so many blessings this week, so many memorials to celebrate Your faithfulness, Father in our lives and also in the life of brothers and sisters that lived thousands of years ago. We praise you and we thank you, Lord, that you are always the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can rely on you always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.